man covered in feathers tumbles out of a truck. Workers inside the truck try to restrain him by his neck, attempting to haul him back in. But the man's strength is immense, sending them flying out. Well, technically, the man isn't really a man at all. He's a bird man, covered head to toe in feathers. The sight startles a father and son who witness it, causing them to hide in a corner, holding their breath and making no sound. Fortunately, the bird man means no harm. After letting out a loud cry, he leaps away from the scene. This scene sets the stage for the recently released apocalyptic disaster film, The Animal Kingdom. The story unfolds in the not-so-distant future, where a mysterious virus sweeps across the globe. Those infected start exhibiting animal-like traits. Some grow feathers and wings, soaring through the skies, while others morph into monstrous creatures. As time passes, these infected individuals gradually lose their consciousness, fully transforming into animals. With no cure in sight, governments resort to forcibly containing those who have already transformed. That's where our tale begins. Luckily, the Birdman spares the father and son, letting out a loud cry before fleeing the scene. The pursuing workers hot on his tail. Seeing this scene, Francois breaks out in a cold sweat because his wife is also among the infected. Could her fate be the same as the Birdman's, turning into a monstrous creature? Francois believes the government will surely develop a cure for the virus. He takes his son to the facility where his wife is being held. The doctor informs Francois that his wife has been detected with monkey genes, which means, if the condition is not controlled, she will eventually transform into a wild monkey. The doctor explains to Francois that their equipment here doesn't currently meet treatment standards, so they need to transfer his wife to another city for treatment. Before leaving, Francois takes his son to the ward. The walls are covered with claw marks, and from the intact photo on the right side of the claw marks, it's evident that his wife still retains some human consciousness. Outside, Francois wants his son to see his mother, but Emile seems hesitant. He can't face his mother's half-human, half-animal appearance, and instead keeps picking at the claw marks on the wall. After waiting for a while, his mother, seeing no response from father and son, turns her head herself, her face gradually morphing into that of a monkey. After leaving the hospital, Francois and Emile continued their journey of migration. No matter how far his wife was transferred to another city, they had to accompany her, staying by her side constantly. After driving for two days, they arrived at a remote suburb and stopped. They rented a villa there, and with the help of a friend's recommendation, Francois found a job as a dishwasher in a nearby restaurant, allowing him to earn money while taking care of his son. Just when they thought life would gradually improve, Francois suddenly received a call from the hospital where his wife was being treated. They informed him that his wife had been involved in a car accident while being transported, and the truck had fallen into the water. Realizing the gravity of the situation, the father and son hurried to the scene in their car. Seeing the bodies floating in the water, Francois wanted to search for his wife, but he was stopped by the police officers. It took three strong men to restrain him, and Francois slumped to the ground in despair, unsure of what to do next. Fortunately, a female officer approached them. She claimed that Francois's wife was not on the list of victims, and that some patients had been attacked by unidentified creatures and fled into the wilderness. There was a possibility that his wife was among them. Finally, the father and son breathed a sigh of relief, knowing that as long as his wife was not confirmed dead, there was still a glimmer of hope. In the dead of night, Francois hung the clothes he and his wife had worn in the yard. A monkey's sense of smell is hundreds of times stronger than a human's, so perhaps they could use this method to find her. By the next day, Emile, disguised as a visiting student, arrived at a nearby school. During a tug-of-war competition, Emile was astonished to find himself single-handedly overpowering four other students of his age. After the competition, he felt something squirming under his fingernails, prompting him to rush to the restroom and pry it open with tweezers. To his horror, he discovered an undeveloped claw growing inside. Emile instantly realized the gravity of the situation. Could he too have been infected by the virus? As Emile stripped off his clothes and looked into the mirror, he noticed several protrusions on his back, indicating that he was beginning to undergo mutation. Meanwhile, Francois was at the supermarket, purchasing suitable self-defense weapons. He intended to venture alone into the primeval forest in search of his wife. Suddenly, he heard a woman scream nearby. Francois rushed towards the source of the sound, calling out his wife's name as he searched. Francois approached the seafood section of the supermarket and called out again, but instead of his wife, a creature resembling an octopus emerged. Mistaking Francois for a captor, the creature hastily threw out a heap of seafood and fled. As it fled, 
it threw objects behind to obstruct the view of the policewoman chasing it. However, this tactic proved futile, and the octopus creature was eventually tackled to the ground and apprehended by the policewoman. Seeing that he was of no use in the situation, Francois decided to leave the supermarket. However, something caught his attention under the shelves, a cute pangolin. Francois chose to keep this discovery to himself, rather than informing the police. Back home, Francois noticed bandages wrapped around Emile's hands and asked what happened. Emile lied, saying he had accidentally fallen and brushed it off. They then proceeded to the primal forest in search of Francois' missing wife. From morning till evening, they found nothing. Suddenly, their dog in the car seemed attracted to something and dashed out. Emile followed and discovered a yellow sweater laid out in the clearing. The dog sniffed around the bread in the bushes, startling a mutant hiding there, causing it to scramble up a tree. The next moment, a birdman burst out from the corner and tackled Emile to the ground. He was the same one who had escaped from the workers earlier. With a swift leap, the birdman pinned Emile down with his thighs and used his sharp claws to injure Emile's arm, causing him to scream in agony. Suddenly, the birdman sensed something familiar about Emile's body. He wasn't entirely human. He was one of the infected mutants like himself. Quickly retracting his claws, the birdman stood up. Francois arrived just in time, wielding a wooden stick to keep the birdman at bay, and then swiftly ushered Emile away from the scene. Emile's wound was treated at a nearby hospital, but oddly enough, upon returning home, he tore off the bandages and licked the fresh blood from his wound with his tongue. It seemed like his mutant traits were becoming more pronounced. He headed to a nearby fish pond and rolled around in it, reveling in the sensation. Later, in front of a neighbor, he boldly picked up a carp and started gnawing on it. With his hunger satisfied, he returned to the spot where he had been attacked by the birdman. Following the traces on the ground, he discovered the birdman earnestly attempting to learn how to fly. Despite numerous falls, the birdman showed no signs of giving up. Emil took out two big carp from his bag, placed them on the ground, and then sat nearby, quietly watching the birdman gnawing on them. The two became friends, and in order to help the birdman learn to fly sooner, Emil brought him to a nearby fish pond, so he wouldn't get injured from falls. That night, upon returning home, Francois noticed that the sink in the bathroom seemed to be blocked by something. He opened the pipes, only to find the claws that Emil had forcibly pulled out earlier. Francois instantly realized that Emil had also been infected by the mutant virus. He stepped outside, extending his claws. However, upon seeing this, Emil didn't hesitate and bolted away. He knew that his father would definitely take him to the detention center for treatment. Seeing his son's agony, Francois eventually softened. Having already lost his wife, he couldn't bear to lose his only family member, Emile. So, Francois took on the role of a doctor and cared for Emile alone. But the good times didn't last long. Emile accidentally revealed his infected status during a class reunion. Everyone brought out hunting dogs and headed into the wilderness, ready to capture Emile. In the dire moment, the birdman flew out from the primeval forest, diverting the hunter's attention away from Emile. But outnumbered, the birdman fell under the hunter's gunfire. Francois realized that if they caught his son, the same fate awaited him. Luckily, heavy rain poured from the sky, halting the hunter's pursuit. Emile found refuge in a nearby cave, intending to rest, but then a monkey entered. It was Emile's mutated mother, who embraced him tightly, tears streaming down both their faces. After pushing his son into the cave, the mother left to draw away the hunters, knowing it was the only thing she could do to protect Emile. Emerging from the cave, Emile ventured deeper into the jungle, where the world of mutants awaited. Among them were cows covered in tattoos and wild horses with thick, curly hair. They didn't seem aggressive, but when a smoke bomb landed nearby, signaling the start of the human hunt, everything changed. Emile wasn't spared and was captured. Meanwhile, a chameleon climbed the branches, narrowly avoiding capture. Since Emile hadn't fully transformed into an animal, the authorities couldn't detain him with the other mutants. The only option was to send him to a nearby care facility for containment. Refusing to go, Emile bared his teeth at the officers. One of them drew a gun, ready to shoot Emile. Thankfully, Francois acted swiftly, pushing the officer to the ground and then escaping the police station with his son. Learning that his father finally understood him, Emile smiled happily. Although he couldn't avoid the fate of becoming an animal, to Francois, he would always be his child. Arriving at a primeval forest, he opened the passenger door and let Emile out. This was his world now. 
as his son vanished completely into the depths of the wilderness. Francois smiled with joy, tears streaming down his cheeks involuntarily.